Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Matthew Kraft. I'm an insider risk advisor here with Code 42 based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, and for the next couple of minutes here, what I'm going to be talking about is insider risk and generative AI. So first, just to level set as we get started, uh, what I want to talk about is just a definition of insider risk as I'm going to use it today. So starting with insider risk occurs when an employee, contractor, vendor, and or partner jeopardizes the well-being of an organization and its employees, customers, or partners. Essentially, someone within that trusted sphere of influence within the organization doing something that they're not supposed to be doing, whether that's intentionally or unintentionally, that brings risk to the organization. Uh, now, you might also be familiar with the term insider threat. Um, and if you hear me use insider threat today, it's when I'm talking about that 1% of the employee population who are maliciously and intentionally causing harm to the organization for some type of personal benefit. They might be uh, taking intellectual property. Uh, they might be trying to do, commit sabotage or fraud because of some perceived slight against the organization, or it might even be something like workplace violence. When I talk about insider risk today, what I'm talking about is not only that 1% of threat, but also that other 99% of the employee population who are the rest of us trying to work smarter and faster and just trying to perform our daily jobs. But by the very nature of being human, we present risk to the organization. So when we talk about insider risk when it comes to generative AI tools, it's important to think about that in two specific sort of categories of risks that are incorporated there. The first one is when the data goes into the generative AI tool. So for example, if you have a developer who is putting in source code to chat GPT and they say, um, you know, help me debug this particular piece of source code. Well, now that source code has left that safety sphere of the security team and is now part of that uh, new large language model there. The other element of that is the data that comes out of that particular tool. And so this might be, for example, a developer saying, please help me write this source code. Can that developer now put that inside of a product that you then release out to your customers? And so there are risks to the organization there of where did that data come from? Who owns that particular piece of source code that comes out of a tool like uh, Google Bard or ChatGPT? And so there are risks on both sides of that equation of what goes into the tool and then how what comes out of that tool is used. So when we think about enterprise risk management and particularly insider risk mitigation when it comes to generative AI tool use, it's important to remember to look across the three elements of people, process, and technology. Um, and I like the analogy here that you see on the screen of a three-legged stool. And the reason I like it is that if one of the legs becomes longer, well, all of a sudden that stool is now out of balance. If one of the legs is shorter, that also now becomes out of balance as well. And so while it's important to have these be in relative balance, they may also never be perfect, but you do want them to be in an approximate balance across people, process, and technology. So what I wanna do is focus in on one particular aspect of each of those three uh, legs of the stool. So starting with the people element there, it's important to assemble your stakeholders to determine the level of risk within the organization. And every organization is gonna be different, but generally speaking, you'll have representatives from security, IT, legal, and HR. Now, depending on your organization, you might also have governance, risk, and compliance, or GRC. Uh, you might have privacy. Uh, you might have a data officer, for example. But these teams are important to bring together because they're gonna be the ones in charge of enforcing the company culture that's being set down by the executive team. They're gonna be the ones arranging and uh, writing up the different policies for the organization. You know, what is in the acceptable use policy? How can people use certain technology? They're gonna be the ones in charge of vendor management and identity access management. They're also gonna be in charge of detecting and enforcing their particular policies. And then of course, following up with the appropriate response and recovery methods as well. These teams might have a, an executive sponsor who's in charge of an insider risk program. They might have a uh, decree coming down from the executive team, or it might be a mandate that comes down from the board as well. But it's important to get this diverse group of stakeholders together because they're gonna be able to help identify those assets and start talking about the risks to those assets presented by generative AI. And so when this group of uh, stakeholders gets together, it's important that they be intentional. Now, don't assume that existing policies and procedures already have you covered about your employees using generative AI like ChatGPT or Dolly or Stable Diffusion. Though many of the risks of generative AI when it comes to insiders already exist, don't put sensitive data where it doesn't belong and be careful with what you get out of a tool that you use, it's important to be intentional and go through those policies 
If I upload a company file to my personal Dropbox account, that's the same data exfiltration. I'm putting that proprietary information where it doesn't belong. If I go to Google search and pull out the first result of a Google search and then slap it into a presentation, that also presents risk to the organization of having misinformation or bias or just completely inaccurate information there as well. And so a lot of those risks do already exist. There certainly are new ones as well, but it's important to not rest on those previous laurels of your existing policies and procedures. Those stakeholders should get together and think about answers to these questions. You know, who is allowed to use the tool? Um, how can access be requested and when does it need to be accessed? Uh, what data can be used as a prompt? What can you put into the tool? And then also, of course, there are the risks of what can come out of the tool and how can that be used within the enterprise as well? So for example, I talked about source code earlier. If a developer puts code into a tool like ChatGPT or Google Bard and asks for source code back, well, now we've put in that proprietary data and now we're potentially getting someone else's proprietary data out. And it's not limited to just source code. If you think about marketing campaigns, maybe you're using something like Midjourney or Dolly or Stable Diffusion and you're getting an output, can you now use that in your marketing campaign? Uh, that was something that Stacy had hinted at in her presentation earlier today of what is the copyright? Who owns that particular piece of art? So all things for organizations to think about when they are thinking about generative AI and getting all of those diverse stakeholders involved. After they have those defined, it's then important to communicate and educate the employee and all of the insider population about the company's stance. The company might say, we don't wanna have any AI use altogether and it's completely banned. They might say, we allow some, but be careful of what you put in and be careful how you use what comes out. Or they might say, you know, we don't have an opinion, use it however you want. And so anywhere on that spectrum, it's important for the company to come out and communicate and educate on that particular policy. And there are lots of different ways to communicate. And general best practice is not just to use one of these, it's to use as many of these as possible to be overly communicative with your employee population. But it might be an employee agreement, a log on banner. If you use Microsoft Teams or Slack to communicate internally, you can have regular posts from the security team there. And it might also be a part of your quarterly or annual security training as well. All of these are ways to inform that employee population of there are these new tools out there, here are the risks they represent, and here's how you can use those within our environment. But one of the most critical is by using real-time education and proactive educational videos. So you'll see proactive SEA for security, education, and awareness lessons. When it comes to generative AI, there are a couple of different ways to approach this. You might have a general uh, video that you might use, such as the risks of AI tools, outlining what tools there might be, some of the risks they present to organizations, and how the employees can use those tools safely within the organization. You might also decide that you need to have some persona-based or situational-based. You might have a specific video just for developers or just for the marketing team because they're gonna be using source code and maybe image generation content respectively. And so they're gonna have their own risk based on the particular tool that they're using. Last but not least, that third leg of this tool, the technology, you wanna make sure that you have technology that can help you protect, detect, and respond to insider risk when it comes to generative AI tool use. And I'm gonna borrow this terminology from the NIST cybersecurity framework, which you can find at the link there. And I really like this framework because it does such a great job at talking about the overview of what cybersecurity can help mitigate within the environment. And you want to have the protection element from the technology. That might be a technical control to make sure that certain elements can't be put into a specific tool, to make sure that they can't leave a specific tool. But it also includes that preventive technology as well, that real-time education or that proactive education. If you can help prevent that risk incident from occurring in the first place, then you've also gone and protected that particular piece of information. If and when something does happen, you want to make sure that you have technology in place that can help you detect the who, what, where, when, how, and potentially why of a particular risk event. The reason for that is once you then you move into response, you want to make sure that you can provide the right sized or the appropriate response. Um, if you have someone who is intentionally and maliciously uploading all of your company's proprietary information into a tool like ChatGPT, either to share that with that particular vendor or to be able to access it later, that might require one type of response. If you have someone who is uploading a list of ingredients that they have inside of their cupboard and they're asking for ChatGPT to figure out what they can have for dinner that night, that might require a different type of response. But without that understanding of the detection of the who, what, where, when, how, and why potentially, 
you weren't able to perform that appropriate right-sized response. So putting all of those together in an example here, starting at the left, an employee performs a risky activity. Maybe they copy and paste something into an AI tool or they upload a file. The technology detects that and generates an alert. The analyst or an automation determines that, yes, this is a true positive, but it's a low level severity alert or it's a moderate severity alert, something that doesn't require a full investigation. So an automation triggers some real-time education. The employee watches that lesson and then they take those best practices going forward. And one of the things that we've seen is that because of this real-time, just-in-time education, this two-minute video right after someone performs an operation that might violate the security policy, not only do they typically not perform that action again, but they also become advocates for others within the organization on how to perform that security operation correctly as well. Say, hey, I just got this video two weeks ago about how not to do this particular risk event. Let me show you so you don't get that same risk event. So not only are they helping reduce the risk that they present to the organization, but they're being a force multiplier for the security team and helping to lower the overall risk within the organization. So in closing, the insider risk element of generative AI comes in two broad categories, input of data into the tool or the egress of data from the organization, and then how that output of that data is used, how that input of the data into the organization may cause risk. And to mitigate that, it's all about balancing the people, process, and technology. Identify and include your diverse group of stakeholders in the conversation from the beginning. Define and document your policies and procedures for GAI tool use, and then educate on them. And then use technology to protect, detect, and respond at the appropriate or the right size response level. That's what I've got today. Um, if people are interested, I will certainly be around in the Slack channel to help answer any questions. Um, you can also find me on LinkedIn if you have any further questions or you want to continue this conversation after the summit. Thanks for letting me speak today here. And uh, Sully, I will hand it off to you. Thank you.